Hey everybody, welcome to boot camp number two. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm gonna start the video feed in just a few seconds here. Um, and uh, hopefully you are all doing well out there, all staying home and practicing your instrument. Uh, I sure am. And I'm just working out a few little details here on the technical side of things. Um, I did things a little bit differently this time in the way I set up the live stream. So here's a bit of a learning curve and I hope you can hear me. Um, let me know. Good, you guys can hear me? All right, the next thing is video. Hey Blaze, let's go. Hey, we are live, hopefully you can see me. Hey everybody, banjo ready. Let me know if you can uh, see and hear me. We finally got a little sun today in the Northeast. It's amazing, it's been cold and rainy for over a week, like really raw 40s and just raining, raining, raining. So to see the sun today was really a miracle. <laughs> uh, let me check in on the chat. Video fine, good. This is the uh, official Banjo Quest t-shirt, only two of which exist. <laughs> but I am seriously thinking of having more made and uh, getting them out in the world. This one's a little itchy, so I'm, I'm a little persnickety about my t-shirts. And this one doesn't quite make the grade, so I'm still finding, I'm looking for a t-shirt vendor. If anybody has any ideas, nice and soft t-shirts would be preferable. Okay, so I am going to use our boot camp sheet here. This is boot camp number two in double C, so make sure you are tuned to double C. And for those of you who are not part of the Patreon community for Banjo Quest, I'm going to provide uh, some tab on screen here in a minute through the miracles of modern technology. I just want to give a few minutes for people to show up. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Uh, this is my apocalypse haircut. Uh, my daughter cut my hair. Well, shaved it and cut it, and uh, so we're going full apocalypse style. She did a mighty fine job. She did a good job. I did pay her, by the way. I, well, I'm not a freeloader. I did. I paid her for my haircut. Um, okay, so a few things about boot camp before I get the tab up on the screen for everybody to follow along with. We're going to start pretty slow. It's going to be a slower tempo uh, than we're used to today. We're going to start at 80 BPM and we're only going to cover the first line. Why don't I just get that up on there now? Um, let's see if this will work. I, let's, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Ta-da. <laughs> can everybody see that? It may be a little small. That's as that's as large as I can make that without it like covering me. Uh, oh yeah, the camera is confused by the background. It may be hunting for me a little bit. Um, I'm using my Panasonic. It should be keyed into my face, but if the focus is crazy, let me just lean in here guys. Oh, come on, focus on me. It's tough to be a one-man operation. Hopefully that does it. Am I better in focus? It's tough, it's tough. I can't use my remote when it's live streaming, so I have to like reach out for it, and it's a little dodgy, so I do apologize. Hopefully the audio's good. That's the most important part for me anyway. Uh, the lights are not flashing. They shouldn't be flashing. But the sun's going down gradually here in Massachusetts, so that's gonna change our lighting situation. Let's just move on. Um, there will be technical issues on this first video, so I do apologize. But we're just gonna forge ahead. So we are going to be starting at 80 BPM. A few things to think about. Uh, the tab is here. Uh, a few things to think about. 
When we're playing these simple patterns, they're going to feel really simple to a lot of you. For you advanced players, you're going to be really thinking and using your deep listening skills with regard to your downstrokes and your upstrokes, getting them nice and balanced. One of the things I hear the most when I'm teaching one-on-one -on -one is that the downstrokes and the thumb strokes are often way out of whack. And the thumb strokes, something I hear all the time, the thumb strokes really take a back seat to the rest of the patterns that people are playing. So I invite you for boot camp to kind of take a different approach, a different tact on how you are approaching the instrument. Think about it this way. You are throwing your hand down into the instrument on downstrokes 50% of the time, only 50%. The other 50% are upstrokes. They're as important as the downstrokes. And if you're, uh, the other thing is if your upstrokes are messed up, if they're weak, if they're, if they're not powerful and full, they will impact your downstrokes downstream. So it's an equal, it's the sewing, sort of a sewing machine action that I want you advanced players to think about. You beginning players, I just want you to hang on for dear life. <laughs> That's all you need to do today. All right, I'm gonna check in with chat and then we're gonna start this thing. Okay, yeah, see if I look away from the, if I look away from the camera, it focuses on something else. So I just have to stare at the camera. I wish you guys could be here and experience giving a live stream to this inanimate object. It's a very absurd and surreal situation. <laughs> All right, here we go. Gonna get my metronome. I'm using my phone today for my metronome. Let's see how we go. I uh, like Time Trainer for those of you who follow along. Hopefully you can hear that. Okay, so we're going to look at, you'll notice up here that each one of these measures, let me pause the other note for boot camp, new people at boot camp. The other thing to notice is that each of these measures has a name or letter. You'll notice that the first one is called home. I'm gonna be calling that a lot. So the idea here is that we're gonna be playing through this line and I am going to call the measures by name or letter. And I'm going to walk you through different patterns and setups that we can use to work your right hand. Now the thing about boot camp in double C is that we're going to have the left hand active all the time because to get your one chord, your C chord, we're going to use the first finger on the second fret of the first string all the time. It's a more intensive boot camp than G tuning boot camp because the fretting hand is more active. Some of you are going to feel tired in a minute as soon as we get rolling. Your arm is going to feel physically tired. That's okay, it's by design. We are seeking and you need to investigate this in your own playing throughout the boot camp. We are seeking really expedient, efficient motions. If you are not efficient, you're never going to be able to gain speed, control, and sort of that flowing softness that you see a real expert player have. You need efficiency in all motions, including the way you are posturing yourself with the instrument. So if you're carrying a lot of tension here, this, I see this all the time. I watch a student in a lesson and the shoulders just gradually, they just like start to rise. I used to do this too. I used to do this all the time. The tension, every bit of tension you carry in your body is going to feed right into the instrument. So you need to spend time during this boot camp trying to relax, keep the body loose. If you find your left arm and shoulder getting tired, it may be because you're doing one of these things, drop the shoulder square to the floor, drop the elbow so it's down, loosen the wrist, neutral grip, easy floating over the strings. And we're gonna get rolling. So keep, be mindful about how you're holding your body. Everybody ready? 80 BPM at the measure we call home. I better get my tab out. I kind of have this memorized at this point, but I still wanna Stay on track. Okay. Everybody grab their banjo. Here we go. Home. On my count. One, two, three, four. Oh, wow. 
that is slow. I'm going to play over the scoop. All right, everybody play along with me. I want everybody playing to get quiet. Don't drop the tempo. So this is interesting. Not only can you play boot camp straight across with all of these different permutations of the patterns, but then you can start adding dynamics. And I just want you guys to be aware of that right off the bat. I love warming up with dynamics, soft and then loud. I hope you're still playing. Here we go, we're going loud. Gradually bring up that volume. Don't speed up. We're still on the home measure for those of you keeping track. Line that downstroke right up with that click. Louder if you can. Middle volume, go to middle volume. Left arm getting tired yet? If it is, check in with it. Relax. Don't forget to breathe. We're just getting started. Oh, watch it there, Tom. How's that fist string doing, you advanced players? All right, check this out. We're still on the home measure. We haven't moved. I want you to make notes one and three louder than the others on your downstroke. I'm gonna count to four. One, two, three, 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 four. One more time. Two, three, four. Back. Ugh. Yeah, that's slow. All right, this is just a general warm up. We're gonna be going forward here in a minute. I'm gonna count us out and we're gonna take a break. One, two, three, four. All right, shake it off, relax. Playing slow is really hard, but you can see when you're playing slow, you're seeking efficiencies, you're seeking relaxation, you're seeking the spaces between the notes. You've gotta widen those spaces. That is a really slow tempo. I bet a lot of you are saying, wow, I'm rushing it. I can feel myself wanting to surge ahead against that tempo. That is not a tempo I'm used to playing at, but this is really good. It's getting the blood flowing. All right, so at, remember, if this whole apparatus starts hurting, you gotta drop that elbow a little bit. You may have to play with the neck angle to get yourself relaxed. Some people need to move the banjo over to their right thigh for you righties to get the arm closer to them for those short armed folks. My arms are rather ape-like in nature. <laughs> and so I, you know, I, I, can, I can get it in the middle of my lap and still feel pretty comfortable. But even by the end of that, I was like, okay, Starting to feel it. Stay loose, stay relaxed, keep the hands soft, not too, don't do the death grip thing or you're gonna tire out really, really soon. All right, here we go. We're gonna get started again here. We're gonna go a little further. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, hey, Ryan Harlan. Shout out to Herring McPickles himself. Ooh, LA 2A. Wish I had one. Uh, Richard, I am using my middle finger. Uh, ooh, I'm getting some... Hopefully I didn't just blow the focus on this. I use my middle finger, but I don't advise middle or first finger. I, it's really kind of up to you. Okay. Are we ready to proceed? All right, here's 80 BPM. We're gonna speed this up in a minute, but I wanna feel this slower tempo for a little while. And again, we will be doing boot camp all week 
for patrons. Uh, and we will be gradually ramping up the tempo. And for patrons, I got a whole sheet of boot camp stuff. We're gonna play some banjo bingo later in the week. I'll figure out how to do that. But I've got a grid of practice that I've got set up for you guys. Okay, let's proceed. Here we go. Home, get ready guys. One, two, three, four. <laughs> gap between your striking finger and your thumb. That's the key to this. Think of it as a gap change. Nothing else. Mechanics should be the same. Punch through the string to a target beyond. Dead ending into the third string. Your third string on measure A, you should be able to look down and see that third string bending under the weight of your downstroke. Home to measures on this whole sheet. Tom, slow it down. God, that's slow, huh? imaginary measure out beyond C if you really look you can visualize it it is the reverse of C okay so we're gonna play C and then we're gonna reverse it on my count one two three four C one two three four reverse shake it out, loosen up. Woo! Really tough keeping this thing engaged, not too engaged, because if it's if you got the death grip, you're going to get super tired super fast. 
If it's too loose, you're not gonna get a good, nice uh, note on that, on that uh, second fret first string. But here's something to think about. If you guys are really tired, if, if, if you're getting fatigued with this part of the, the exercise, you're sitting there alone, probably. Maybe you've got a room full of people, but if you're all by yourself and if you need a break, you can drop this and play the entire first line just with your striking hand. So if you are getting tired or if your finger gets a little sore, drop this out of the picture and stay with me uh, with the right hand. Now, let me just show you a little trick we can do at 80 BPM. How's everybody? Before I proceed, I better check in. Everybody still with me? Ah, uh, la la. Everybody okay? How many people are there? I'm in this really sort of weird... Uh, I, I can't really see how many people there are. Um, anyway. All right. Hey, Sylvia. All right, 80 BPM. Okay, so check this out. We're gonna look at the home measure. Here's a little challenge for everybody, but especially you advanced players. You beginners may feel like this is a bit of a stretch, but try to stay with me. We're gonna attack this home measure, same tempo, 80 BPM, and then we're gonna double it, right? So it's gonna sound like this. One, two, three, four. Try this with me. One more time. Okay, that's really hard to talk and do that at the same time. That is a really great exercise for you um, advanced players. Beginners, dipping your toe into that kind of thing can really help you lock in the feeling of the groove because you're sort of uh, playing the same tempo but at different resolutions. And that's a really nice thing to do if you're trying to train your inner clock. You can obviously do that on every single measure here you can play at 80 BP or any tempo. You probably would want to find your tempo ceiling first and play it at the fast speed and then you cut that in half to play it at the slow speed. So um, if that makes any sense. Um, let's get things going a little faster though. I'm going to bump it up to a 90. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're gonna start over here at the home measure. Here we go. Keep, keep the hands soft. Don't get too tense. Watch the tension. This is uh, as much about building your stamina as it is sort of watching where things are, where you're holding and carrying tension and seeking your cleanest, most efficient path to the instrument. Here we go, home. One, two, three, four. All right, let's stay home for a minute at 80 BPM and get used to this new brighter tempo. And I want you to turn your attention, right now with me, turn your attention to your left hand. Don't pay attention to your right right now. What is your fretting hand doing? Adjust it. Experiment with letting it up. Oh, I'm getting a mute here, right? I gotta put more tension down. Just enough to fret the note and no more. I'm gonna go into a deeper fiddle grip here than a classical guitar grip. Can you change your grip? Without it impacting what you're doing. It just impacted what I was doing. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hey. 
Okay, one, two, three, four. Home, two, three, four. A, two, three, four. B, two, three, four. One of the most important measures on this whole sheet. Stay with me, that's the largest gap change that you have to contend with on the instrument. Unless you're going to downstroke the fifth string, and I'm putting together a video for you guys about that over on Patreon. Downstroking the fifth string, we'll get there. C, two, three, four. Reverse of C, two, three, four. C. Reverse. C. Reverse. Home. All right, who wants to play this? We're gonna play it as written. Once on each measure, okay? Through the whole first line of boot camp. One, two, three, four. Home. Again. Oh gosh, Tom, don't speed up. Last time through. Then go to home. Home. Quiet down. We're almost done with this part of the session. Gosh. So, when you get quiet, the tendency is to slow down. When you get loud, the tendency is to speed up. Fight that tendency. Now that you know that, now you're armed. You can hedge against both of those tendencies. Oh, I feel the tension in my right shoulder right now. Gotta relax. Get quiet. Okay, can you accent your fist strings? One, two, three, four. Even it out. One, two, three, four. Accent all down strokes. One, two, three, four. Normal. One, two, three, four. And out. One, two, three, four. Woo! Yeah, blood should be flowing at this point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Something about having this arm active can really change the way an extended playing session like that feels. If you guys get tired, this is all about supporting the shoulders, the core, getting feet on the ground. If your feet are not square on the ground and plugged into the earth, you're going to you know, find yourself having to support yourself in really awkward positions and you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get sore. So um, I'm, I'm dealing with it too. I'm trying to stay square, relaxed, and calm. <laughs> Let me check in to see how you all are doing. And we'll do one more session here. Usually the boot camps last about 45 minutes or so. Um, so we're gonna probably go for another 10 minutes and then I'm gonna open it up for questions uh, at the end if you guys have any. I'll spend a couple minutes answering questions. Um, let me check in with everybody. Uh, let's see. Oh, 72 people. Woo! 
Oh, uh, nice. Hey, everybody. Let's see. I'm, uh, I'm catching up on chat. Oh, my lights are flickering. That shouldn't be happening. That's odd. I'm not seeing that on my feed, Sylvia. That's really weird. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, I apologize. Um, hey, uh, Hey from Switzerland, first time playing in double C here. Nice, awesome. It is a great, great tuning. Super flexible, uh, very cool. 80 now, 80 people. Tom, I think the sun is coming through the door causing light fluctuations and I go in and out of focus. Yep, well, uh, it is what it is. I apologize, uh, a one man operation here. So uh, we're gonna have to just put up with it. Uh, yeah, I can see that. It's hunting for focus. Sound is the most important thing. All right, you guys ready to play a little more? Ah, it wants to focus on, I know, at my, uh, my other banjo, it's calling the camera. It's when I look away, because, yeah. It's trained on my face right now. It's all right. It's all good. Uh, let's go. Oh, I'm, I'm jacking up the tempo, guys. So let's go 100. All right, so here's the deal. Another thing about boot camp, and it's designed this way, is that if you beginners get to a point where you cannot proceed, that's okay. You can always go home and still play along or drop out for a few seconds and hop back on the train. So that home measure, I, it's no accident that I call it home. If you're struggling, go home, stay there, kind of like uh, the coronavirus pandemic, stay in your home <laughs> and then proceed with caution when you're getting, you know, if you start getting fatigued and tired. You advanced players, the challenge here is to balance the stroke and stay relaxed, stay relaxed. We are now at 100 BPM. Welcome to the first day of boot camp. Are we ready? Uh, tab here, follow along. Here we go. Home. One, two, three, four. See this time through. C two three four. Stay on C with me.
tempo, stay on that bright 100. Fade out and out. One, two, three, four. Okay, that was 100 BPM for those of you who are keeping track. Are there some brave souls out there who want to jack this up? That was 120. This is for you advanced players, real quick. 140, I'm gonna do it real quick. This is kind of a demo for you beginners. If you can't play at this speed, just put the banjo down for just a second. I'm gonna run through a couple exercises for you advanced players at 140 BPM. Try to keep up, stay loose, stay light, stay relaxed. Real quick, just so you can see what it's like when you start getting to these upper tempos. One, two, three, four. getting to those upper tempos. Ah, we're going to be getting to those upper tempos later in the week when you guys have the rest of the sheet to work from. Uh, let's just crush it for a second. Anybody want to join me at 200? <laughs> just to see, just to see, and then I'll answer questions. Here we go. A, home, home. One, two, three, four. Entire line as written. Here we go. One, two, three, four, home. A, B, C. Home. A, B, C. One more time. That was 200 BPM if you did that, good job. So the only reason I can play at that tempo consistently like that is just practice. There's no magic here, there's nothing special. I just put in the time, I listened carefully, I found my most expedient, direct, simple lines in and out of the instrument and I worked and worked and worked at it. I run through exercises like these on a daily basis as my warm up for the day. I still do it, I still think it is huge. It improved my playing immeasurably when I figured this stuff out, how important these fundamentals are. Even if you don't have any designs on playing at 200 BPM, it doesn't matter, we're not, Speed does not equate to good music, so just keep that in mind. I, I understand that, but having this kind of headroom in your music, having this kind of ability to be relaxed at any tempo that could possibly come your way gives you confidence, clarity, and playing at these upper speeds forces certain adaptations to happen with your strike that forces you to be um, as... as um, sort of 
reduce your music, reduce your stroke to its most essential parts and get rid of all the extraneous stuff. Simple lines in and out of the instrument yield relaxed, beautiful playing. And this is all about building that. Okay, that is boot camp for today. There are six more days of it for anybody who is interested in joining the Patreon campaign over on my Patreon account. Uh, it's a really wonderful community and there's a whole lot more to it than this. And we're gonna be doing it every day for uh, a week and it will all be archived so you can run through this at any time. But now let me jump into chat. Uh, when I do that, it's the camera is going to flip out on the focus, but we're just gonna have to deal. And I will answer any questions that you guys have. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish you the best. I know this is a difficult time for everybody. One of the ways I found to get my mind at ease and ready for my days is I start the day with something simple like this. It allows me not to even think about a tune. Just get one plate spinning for the day in the beginning of the day. Brings me calm and peace, and then I can hit my day running. All right, let me answer some questions for you. All right. Um... <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, uh, Kawhi's here. Hello. Or Kawhi, is that how? Yes, it's with a V. That's probably right, isn't it? I'm sorry. Uh, pronunciation, yeah. Uh, let's see. David, I think the focus is because you're facing the ceiling. Try to focus on your chest. Thanks, David. We'll try that next time. Uh, let's see. Yes, 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 LOL, wow, left hand starting to cramp up. 120, yes, 200 crash and burn, I hear you. It's, this is gradual. We will get you faster if you're here all week. By the end of the seven days, you will be paying, playing faster than you could play today, I promise you. Um, uh, let's see. Speed okay, fist strings fades. Hey, Sean, uh, so glad you're here. Yes, so the speed part for you advanced players, if, if you're really paying attention, that, that fist string, when it starts to fade, that signaling something is, is not perfect with your technique. So you need to figure that out. One of the things I find when I'm playing at speed, um, for you guys who are struggling, let me ramp it up higher than 200. <laughs> This is 220. So if I'm playing at home, at that speed, I am introducing a little bit of tension to my thumb. It can't be totally floppy at that speed. You can hear me start to break down at 220. tension into my thumb at those super upper speeds. So this is a really important thing. Playing fast is not simply playing slow faster. <laughs> if that makes any sense, I'm going to say that again. Playing fast is not playing slow faster. There is an adaptation that has to happen in your stroke to get you to those upper speeds. A couple things have to give. You have to, first of all, not be going you know, your motions have to get much smaller, right? The motion becomes more localized to the wrist and not so fulcrum-y. Uh, you're also keeping your hand uh, so soft, but I'm adding a little tension to the thumb to give it a little bit firmer purchase on my upstrokes to get those upper speeds. So my, my that's not how I play it when I'm playing slow. When I'm playing slow, I got these big Ophi dumb movements where I'm rolling on that uh, fulcrum, generating lots of lots of sort of mechanical force, a whipping action from the fulcrum on my slower speeds. And when I speed up, that starts to become more localized to the wrist. Thumb gets a little bit uh, more tense, 
and all of that motion is coming from the wrist, that bob, but there's still a little bit of a whip going on there. So mind the adaptation. Don't just try to play slow, fast. Adapt yourself to the upper tempos by forcing yourself to play at these speeds that feel like they're at the limit of your range. It's a really good point. Um, Sean, thank you for that. Uh, let's see, sloppy 200. Hey, 200's good. Feel happy. Fail on the whole way through. That's all right, Robin. We're going to be working all week. We will get you up there. Uh, Steven can do 200, but the fist string goes to crap. Yes, Sean, Sean has the same issue, Steve. Sean, Sean has the same issue. So um, the thing about those upper tempos is my... my it's almost like my thumb gets less active because it gets more tense and it's not like I'm not inputting. It's just sort of attached to my hand like a piece of meat. I don't know if that helps you at all. It's, it's hard, but again, we, we took some big bites today as sort of the intro to, to boot camp. We'll be going more incrementally through the whole sheet uh, on subsequent days. So we'll take smaller steps. Uh... Jim asks, I'm still catching up to the chat. Uh, sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Jim asks, hi, Jim. How are you in Newburyport? I hope you are well. Uh, did I mention the brand of metronome at the very beginning, Jim? Uh, I'm using just my iPhone. This is Justin Guitar's Time Trainer. It's, I don't even know if it's kept up to date. I really like it, though. It's really nice and simple, and it sounds decent. I use it on a daily basis um, when I'm not using something analog. This is Time Trainer on the App Store. Hopefully it's still there by Justin Guitar. Let me see. Uh, Jason, great exercises, Tom. Just signed up for Patreon. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Patreon community that is gathered around Banjo Quest is amazing. It's a great group of people uh, and I'm. it's something that is, uh, I don't know, it's just awesome. It's a great group. Lots of knowledgeable folks there. Uh, let's see. Luke, 200 only over the head, impossible over the scoop. Okay, that's really interesting. You, uh, you would ideally want to be able to play over the scoop that fast. So what is it about it? When people ask me how to play over the scoop, I tell them, go cold turkey for a month. Don't play over the head for one month. Forbid yourself for doing it. Only play over the scoop and you will get it. It will feel as natural as playing over the head. I was just like you. I had a real hard time playing over the scoop. And when I played over the scoop, I would migrate back. Inevitably, I'd get like a quarter into a tune and I'd be back near the bridge. That doesn't happen anymore. I'm really disciplined about where I'm putting my hand. It's just a practice, nothing magic, just practicing. And I, when a student comes to me and says, hey, I can't play over the head very well, or I can't play over the scoop very well, help me. I say, go cold turkey, only play over the scoop for 30 days and you'll have it. You will have it if you, if you play every day, which you should be doing anyway. Uh, Richard. Helps to get in the zone at the faster tempo. If you lose it once, it's gone. Richard, that is a true statement. Uh, Terry, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Gordon, moving the banjo over to my right knee was a great move that he will continue to use. Good, Gordon. Glad that worked. When are we getting our BQ t-shirts? I'm working on that. I am working on that. I mentioned at the beginning of the, there are only two of these in existence. I am wearing one. It's a little scratchy. I'm trying to find the right t-shirt. I'm a little persnickety about the t-shirts, but the more info on these will be coming. They're totally sweet. Uh, let's see. Notice you weren't using a pick. How do you feel about Kling Pro Picks? I think they're okay. I prefer the, uh, what are they called guys? Uh, oh, yes, the Kling. Yes, sorry, I was thinking of um, another one. They're awesome. They're awesome. I just got a new batch in. I use them to save my my nails. Uh, I like the Kling Pro Picks a, a lot. He is making brass ones. I'm gonna do a video about this soon. He makes them in brass and they're awesome. You may have to contact him about that. 
Uh, I do not use picks uh, normally. Uh, I only use picks to save my nail for other things like recording or performing or whatever uh, because I like the sound of a natural nail best for me. Uh, but if I need to preserve my nail, like getting ready, I remember getting ready to teach at Fiddle Hell. I was playing so much in prep. I was wearing through my nail like crazy. So I used the, the Kling Pros to uh, save my nail for, 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 um, for the camp. Let's see. Uh, uh, the Edge 22. If I focus on downstroke, I tend to lose the groove. If I concentrate on upstroke, I tend to stay in the pocket. Make any sense? Yes, but you should be unassailable in either way. Uh, let me get rid of this. Um, you should be uh, you should be able to do both. So whenever you come up, this is a great lesson for everybody out there. Um, whenever you come up against a problem like this. Like I can only do this when I can, when I'm doing this, or I can only play like this when I'm thinking of this. It means that you, that, that your tech, there's something in your technique that, uh, you need to fix because you want to be unassailable. You want to not have to focus on any of this. I don't use this when I'm playing music with others. I'm listening. I'm listening, listening to the other musicians focus more on them than I am on myself. I'm stretching out with my ears and letting my hands do what I've trained them to do. And if, if there's a hole in my technique, it can cause me to falter. And I can remember feeling that way a lot when I was learning. I would go to a jam session and if, if something distracted me, I, I, would, I would go right off the rails and it wouldn't be good. So if you have one of these things where you can only play the groove when you're focused on the upstroke, you got to figure that out and try playing focused on the downstroke to see if you can counteract it and fix it. Because any hole in your technique, you want to patch it up. You want to patch it up. That's my approach anyway. That's the way I view it. Um, Sylvia says, how long do you spend doing these drills each day? That is an awesome question. Uh, I warm up with these drills probably five minutes a day, and then I'm off to the races with prepping tunes, getting ready for lessons, working on videos for Patreon and YouTube and that kind of thing. So it's not a huge time commitment for me now. It's sort of a check-in with my patterns, and I'm really pushing tempos. I work a lot on sweep patterns these days. <laughs> Ah, that was terrible. We will be getting to that pattern, that identical walk up the uh, C major scale with the sweep pattern later in the week for uh, the boot camp. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Uh, that's that's sort of where I'm at when I do my fundamentals, like uh, trying to get as fast and fluid as I can with those uh, drop thumb sweeps, because I find that that positive really, for me, that is positively impacts my playing and gets the juices flowing for the day. So five minutes. Of course, when you're learning how to do this stuff, you may need to dump a little bit more time into it on a daily basis. But if you, the, the trick is the consistency, the daily part. The less important thing is how long you do it for. If you can even do this kind of thing for two minutes a day straight, that's a, the, the length of a typical tune with an external timekeeper, that's great practice. You've got to be listening. You've got to be focused. But, you know, it's not the duration of time as much as it is the consistency in making sure you're doing it every day. Let me check in here. Is double C a versatile tuning to sing with? Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. Yes, how do chords work compared to open G? Well, uh, that's a huge topic. Um, I will get into that at some point in a video for YouTube uh, that will probably be wide release. It's on my list of things to do. Double C is an amazingly flexible tuning. All of your basic chords are there. Um, I favor it to other tunings most of the time. I think it's really, really beautiful. And for singing, it is truly lovely. But of course, everybody's voice and singing range is a little different, so you gotta do you. Uh, let me catch up. Uh, please keep reminding me to relax. Philip, relax. 
Uh, Michael Neiman broke my nail yesterday trying to play with Kling Pro. Yeah, the yeah, getting used to playing with a pick is not easy. Uh, almost, we're gonna wrap up here, so get your questions in. A couple more questions. Uh, Jim Smalley's been playing Scruggs lately, but wants to learn Clawhammer. Basic instruction watched yesterday was very helpful. Any other suggestions? Um, I would start, Jim, I would work uh, with Banjo, the Banjo Blitz series. If you're starting from scratch, that's, uh, that's my series. That's all free on YouTube. Just search Banjo Blitz and you'll find it. That's a nice sort of building block, step-by-step -step progressive building block series that I did. Um, and uh, the other... Uh, the other player I really like for beginning Clawhammer is uh, Dan Levinson's Clawhammer from Scratch book, which is one of my favorites. Uh, huge uh, contribution to the thinking about how to get your head around Clawhammer banjo. So that's a really good one. Highly recommended. Dan is a very, very fine player and a fine gentleman. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lisa, when I hit 200, I keep tripping from second to third. 200's up there. It's hard. It's hard. Slow it down a little bit. Uh, banjo sounds great. Ohm Tupelo, light gauge in the market for... Yes, Ohm Tupelo. Awesome instrument. So amazing. Uh, Bill Keith medium lights set up with a John Balch goat skin head. Nice and tight. This thing is... I love it. I love it. Love it. Such a great instrument. Uh, Ron! Ron! Hi, Ron! Hope you're well. Uh, Doug, check out Tom's Flip the Click. Yes, switching the downbeat really helped me get unstuck. Doug, thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, that's a good one. Flip the click. Do a Google search for flip the click and you'll find some really uh, crazy exercises with claw hammer banjo with a metronome. Um, Kling Pro works best when the tip is even with the tip of your... Okay, Terry. Yeah, I, I can see that. Mine's got to overhang a little bit. So yeah, your miles may vary. Are you still going to be releasing a Banjo Blitz book? Curtis says that, yes, 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 that is coming out the fall. I am working on it on a daily basis here at Banjo Quest uh, headquarters. You patrons will get the, uh, the inside scoop on that. Yes, there will be a Banjo Blitz book. I'm really excited about it. It's going to be cool and it's going to hopefully be released this fall if I do my part. Uh, and let's see, Jamie, is Climber applicable for playing bluegrass? Sure it is. Yes, it is. Of course it is. Um, I look at Clawgrass, Mark Johnson, amazing player. It definitely can be adapted for, uh, bluegrass. And of course, Ralph Stanley played Clawhammer, um, and got great results from it as well as three finger. And Steve Martin plays both Clawhammer and, uh, bluegrass three finger style. It can, it's not often that you hear claw hammer in a bluegrass setting, but it sure can be. It's a very flexible, adaptable style that is incredibly unique, incredibly beautiful, though I am a little bit biased. I think it's the most beautiful thing ever. Okay, guys, it is five o'clock, my time. I will see you tomorrow for the, the second day of boot camp at 3 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. tomorrow, Eastern time. We're going to be working through the whole sheet for patrons only. If you have interest in supporting what I do on Patreon, go to Patreon. It has been a game changer for me. And honestly, in these times, independent artists are having trouble. I've lost a bunch of students recently because they could not afford to spend money on lessons. So Patreon has been sort of my lifeline. If you are interested in supporting this project, please do consider it. Thank you all for joining me. There will be lots of free content coming for those of you who can't support a Patreon um, campaign. It's totally cool. So I will be doing a bunch of free stuff uh, throughout the month of April. So subscribe to my channel if you wanna get notified when those come out. The rest of you patrons, I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining me. Tom Collins, out.